linear color key is found under the keying category. And this is kind of an older color keying effect for removing green screens, blue screens, or any color screen meant to isolate an object or a subject. Now I'm going to continue to use my favorite green screen clip of Shia LaBeouf, but start by saying that there is likely no better choice in After Effects than Key Light. And there are even some easy to use presets that come with After Effects for Key Light. It's just a very fully featured keying system and it works really well. But it is still worth knowing about the other keying effects in After Effects so that you know all of your options just in case you run into some issues with keying and another effect may do the job a little bit differently. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag out linear color key onto this footage. And we get two thumbnails in our controls over here. The one on the left will always be your unkeyed footage and the one on the right is after the key. So it's defaulted to using this blue color. So we're not seeing any transparency in our footage. But if I grab that eyedropper and just click on the green screen, then a lot of that goes away and we see it reflected over here in our thumbnail. Now this is where I wanna point something out. If I disable this effect, this footage looks pretty clean. It looks like it was shot fairly well, lit fairly evenly doesn't look like too difficult of a shot to key, but the reality is if I zoom in here, there's actually a lot of green spill on Shia. You can see it here on the side of his face, down here on the side of his shirt, in the reflection of his watch. There's actually a lot of green spilling onto him, so it's not as straightforward as you might think. If I turn this effect back on, you can see that immediately there's a lot of transparency happening where we do not want it. And if I switch to viewing my alpha channel only right here on my comp viewer, then I'm gonna see the mat that's being used to shape that transparency. And there's so much of his skin being removed and not even all of the background has been removed. Now there are lots of tips and tricks and workflows for keying out green screens in After Effects, but I don't wanna spend too much of this video focusing on those tips and tricks. I really just wanna show you how linear color key works. So let's ignore the fact that a lot of our subject is missing right now and just zoom in over here to see that there is some green screen still showing up. If I go into that alpha view again, I can see it very clearly. And over here in our controls, we have an eyedropper with a plus and an eyedropper with a minus. This will allow me to add more color range to my selection just by using the eyedropper. So if I click on this and then click on part of that green that's still showing up, it's going to get rid of that. Now, more of Shia is disappearing and that's not exactly what we want, but what that eyedropper did was modify these two properties right here, matching tolerance and matching softness. Matching tolerance is basically the range of colors on either side of the key color that are going to be accepted as something that should be keyed out. And then matching softness is how soft of a transition that is from either end of that range. So let's switch this back to RGB and I'll just dial these back. If I turn these back to zero actually, and turn up the matching tolerance, you can see how that's taking more green away, but it's extremely crunchy. There's no softness to this at all until I increase matching softness, and then it very quickly gets much softer. So you have to play with these to get something that you're happy with. So if I didn't want so much of that getting keyed out, I'd have to dial the softness back a lot and probably even the tolerance back but then I'm left with a lot of garbage around the outside, and I don't really like dealing with garbage mats, so my way of working around this is first resetting the effect, choosing that color one more time, forget about what the subject looks like, and just make sure that you turn the tolerance and the softness up enough to get rid of all of that green in the background, and it'll be even easier to see if I go to that alpha mode. So again, we're still seeing just a little bit here, so I'm gonna grab that plus and click right there, just turn this up ever so slightly until that goes away. Now I'm fairly confident that all of my green background is gone. I'll switch back to RGB, collapse this linear color key, and then go into the matte category and drag out a simple choker. I'll zoom in nice and close, and then just turn this back to a negative number until all of my subject has returned. So let's switch back to the alpha view one more time. We can see for sure that now there are no holes within my subject. If I turn that off and back on, you can see what it did. The benefit of this is that now my entire green screen is gone from that first pass of my linear color key. So from here, I can again add another instance of the linear color key. And now all I have to worry about is basically this outline around my subject. So I'll just grab that key color again, click once on that. It's going to remove a lot of the skin color again, so I'm going to need to dial back that matching softness maybe increase the tolerance and really turn that softness down until I have something like that. But there's still a very hard chiseled out edge around my subject. So again, I'm going to grab another simple choker, 
and bring that in just a little bit. Now you could use matte choker and have even more control, but this is just a very simple way of dealing with that outside edge that's pretty hard. I think this is gonna work for what I need. And now that I have my subject isolated, it's a lot more apparent on this black background how much green is actually showing up inside of my subject. So I'm gonna bring out one more effect called Advanced Spill Suppressor. And if I just click and drag that out, it immediately removes most of that green spill. It's basically desaturating it and attempting to match colors around it. I don't even need to change the method into the Ultra method, just leave it as default and it's actually working really well. So if I turn my effects off and back on, we're getting a pretty clean key of Shia. Now if I scrub through here and get to a point where he's really moving his hands around, there's some motion blur, obviously there's some problems here. So I'd probably wanna go back and mess around with my choker values. And I might even need to go into my first instance of linear color key and turn that matching tolerance down a little bit. But now that I have this set up, I can easily dial these numbers in until I get closer to something that's actually working. And with just a few tweaks, that actually looks a lot better. Now there are some other controls in the linear color key effect, so I'm just going to duplicate this since we have it pretty much where we want it, and I'll delete all of the effects except the first instance and just quickly show you what the other controls do. Again, I'm gonna choose that green key color, and we have this view control. Currently it's showing us the final result, but I could change it to source only, where we're not seeing the affected version anymore, as well as matte only, which is going to show me that matte. This is the, essentially the same view as switching to the alpha. I'll put that back to final. Next is match colors, and this is the technique that the effect is using to do the keying with. So we're using the RGB channels right now to pull the colors, but we could also do this using just the hue, and that gives us a different look. If I turn my transparency grid on, you can see that this is very noisy. I would probably need to turn down that matching softness and again, combine it with something like a simple choker to dial it back and then key it out a second time. But that's just another technique. We also have using chroma. This effect works with 32 bits per channel, so if you have footage that actually has luminance values, then you can use chroma keying in this effect. Finally, we have key operation. Let me change this back to RGB. It's set to key colors, but we could also keep colors. This actually needs a second instance of linear color key. So let me put that back to key colors, duplicate this. I'll turn off the original and reset the second. And let's just say that I want to keep the skin tone. I'm gonna to use that as my key color. And then I'm gonna drop down and change this to keep colors and then turn my linear color key back on. Now I already knew that there's a lot of green spill on the skin of this footage, but this second instance is attempting to fill in those holes, basically preserving those colors, and it's doing a pretty good job. The issue is that it's also bringing back in some of that green screen. But once again, I could just add a simple choker, drag it forward this time to pull some of that out, and we're again left with something that doesn't look all that bad. So you can use those two instances of the same effect in combination to make a cleaner version of your key. And once you're happy with your key, then you can do some fun stuff like put Shia into another scene. Do it! Just do it! But that's everything you need to know about Linear Color Key. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.